This video is going to be a history of my D9 and where it came from and some a lot of old VHS footage coming up here. Now the timestamp on the video says 1986, that's not correct. Uh, the following video takes place in November of 1994 and I am building a dam for a couple of awesome ranchers up in uh, Bone, Idaho. Uh, this was a real tough job, and you'll get to see that. Anyway, my tractor got rolled up there, and you'll see that too. So enjoy the video. Okay, we lose our sound here. Uh, this is my dad's uh, Wapco 333, and uh, this came from J.R. Simplot's Bullville, Idaho mine. And uh, he loved this thing. <clears throat> I absolutely hated it. It was electric steer, electric elevators. It was always broke down. Uh, just a miserable SOB, but. The more I bitch, the more he hung on to it. Uh, this is my oldest son, Matt. This is 1994, so Matt would have been 11 years old, almost 12. And he would come up on weekends and help us. And the reason that that D9 is here, Dad's D9, is because he rolled mine, and we had to bring his up there to tip mine back up. And he had a ripper, which came in real handy, so... Matt's doing some ripping for him so he can load. And this old girl's a 66A2901. Uh, I bought the ripper off of it and put it on mine uh, shortly after this job, I believe. 
and uh, I don't know where this cat went he sold it for 10 grand with really good undercarriage on it it the only problem it had is it had some counterboards that were bad and it pressurized the radiator but that Wabco I believe that's probably about a 1958 59 model she's a honey it's always having electrical problems okay so here comes my cat I want you to notice the canopy uh, dad slipped off the frost and rolled it off a 15 foot straight up and down high wall he's lucky to have survived it no seat belt no hard hat the canopy did not collapse but you can see the one upright broke off once we tipped it up and fell against the tank and there's really not much left holding it on right there so what we're doing right here is we're crossing the creek below the dam and we're getting heavy clay soil uh, for the uh, keyway in the dam and this was probably one of the toughest jobs I've ever done uh, just cold and miserable and nasty and wet and we were always stuck trying to get in and out of here but anyway these people that I was working for were awesome because their uh, wives would come up every day with a hot lunch homemade hot lunch and man that was that was just super really good people Okay, this is the dam completed. I think it was about 30, 40 feet high. And this is later in the spring we came back when it was filled up. Anyway, it's still there. It hasn't washed out. Must have done a good job. And this is us hauling the cat home in the spring. And this is a job I went to out in, uh, let me back up. Okay, so the reason I left the cat up there all spring is in January of 1995, January 23rd, I think, I moved my 637 clear down to uh, Bullfrog Lake Pal, Utah to work. And I needed a dozer, one with a ripper, so I borrowed my dad's and I hauled his nine down there. And so I just, it was miserable to even get his out. We had to chain the truck up. And then uh, these ranchers had to get their D5 and pull me up one of the hills to get up out of there. So I just left mine up there till the spring. So this is a job in Chalice that I did after I came home from Bullfrog. 
And this is uh, 23 miles out of Chalice on the road to Salmon, Idaho. I believe they call this Elk Creek. And this is the road we built. This is a whole nother story right here. It is a sight long overdue for Bingham County Commissioners. Giant earth movers pushing down the gravel bars in the middle of the Snake River near Blackfoot. Backers say the gravel has to come out before the next high water year. Otherwise, it could see more flooding like we saw a couple springs ago. The Army Corps of Engineers will pay 65% of the $140,000 cost. The county will pay for the rest with a state grant. And some good news for boaters and swimmers who like to enjoy the water at a popular park. Denson's Grove Lake is once again full. A different gravel bar upstream on the Snake River was keeping water from flowing into the lake, and the level was slowly dropping. Nearby irrigation canal helps pump additional water back into the grove, filling it to the rim, so boaters no longer have to worry about bottoming out. Summer. Michelle Kennedy shows us why nearby residents are thrilled about the project. The gravel is finally being taken away. 70,000 cubic yards of rocks that will take about two weeks to remove. Uh, and, and in the process of doing this job will help increase the capacity of the Snake River and thereby uh, preventing uh, or reducing some of the flooding that may occur in the future. Residents around here are happy to see the gravel being removed simply because they don't want to see any more flooding that's occurred so many times in the past. To the bottom, and just plugged up the whole channel through there. So uh, anytime they take gravel out of there, it's going to open the channel back up. County commissioners say the gravel removal was a long time coming, but will be worth it in the long run. Since the, since the flood last year, we've been working on this and, and haven't been able to accomplish this because of the, uh, because of the high runoff this year that didn't allow us to do the work. The $100,000 project is also possible because of reduced water flows this time of year. In Blackfoot, I'm Michelle Kennedy, News 3. Okay, this is uh, the canopy. We welded the uprights back on it, patched it together, and Matt and Jake are moving some of the gravel that we took out of the river uh, to do some work for a potato processing facility there. Here's Jeffrey's new 10 gallon of paint dozer. 10 gallons of paint and it's brand new, but it's bald headed. And here it is, all painted up, and we took it off to its first project. This is a subdivision up Mink Creek in Pocatello, Idaho. to give you some history on the D9 when I bought it. I uh, believe it was 1988 I picked this honey up in uh, the Terex dealer, Lakeshore, down in Pocatello had it. 
Uh, I'm not I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I think it came from northern Idaho. Some guys had it trying to mine with it. I don't know if it got repossessed. I think it was. It was uh, a finance company had to repossess it. Anyway, I went and looked at it, and I just went, oh, geez, no ripper. Undercarriage was totally gone. Uh, cosmetically, it didn't look too good. Anyway, ended up picking it up for 15 grand. It barely crawl on the low boy. In the video, you'll see where I talked about it getting tipped over. So what happened was it was October, November when we did this. So the ground had some snow and it was frozen. And I had my dad come up to try to help me to get this done because they they opted to start so late in the year on this project. So he came up with his Wabco and he he needed to go up the hill farther so he he got on my cat and he was pushing the frost off the side of the hill on the brush and he was pushing it over a 15 foot drop off where he had uh, cut borrow material and my son Matt and I were laying under the 37 changing cutting edges we could hear him working then all of a sudden it just sounded like you know somebody dropped the dozer blade real hard and then the cat shut off and I said, Matt, I said, what the hell's your grandpa up to? And he said, well, he's upside down, Dad. <laughs> so I scrambled out from under the cat, and by the time or I got out from under the scraper, he was standing out there rubbing his noggin. He'd hit his head pretty hard. The only thing that saved him was uh, underneath the fenders there, I have some inch and a quarter or inch and a half L brackets that are welded to the frame and then go up under the fenders. And that's the only thing that kept those fenders from breaking off and crushing him. And what he'd done is he was he was pushing the frost and he, he let his blade uh, come up over the frost. And then once he got the tracks on the frost and he was pushing uh, sideways and then off the hill, well, it just took off and went off the hill. That must have been really scary. So... We came home, got his nine, got it hauled up there. By the time I got it up there, it was pitch black dark. And uh, so we didn't really get any pictures or video of it. We were busy. We got it tipped back up, and you saw the canopy, how bad it was. So anyway, when I got this tractor, the undercarriage was, was pretty bad shape. Ended up uh, turning the pins and bushings was all in it. Ended up going through both final drives, a bunch of engine work, hydraulic work. Uh, then later on, after the job, that damn job, the engine cut loose. The count had bad counterbores. So we overhauled the engine, and then we painted it. Uh, we put this uh, canopy. This canopy came from Carter Caterpillar, I think, back in... Is a Virginia or Kentucky, and uh, we put that on, and then I ordered decals for it, and when they came, they were D9H decals instead of G, so I just put them on, <laughs> and so a lot of people think it's an H. It's not an H. It's a G, so I had to buy new fenders for this, and I got the prints, and Partner Steel in Pocatello, Idaho, bent these fenders up and punched all the holes in them for $258 a piece. But when I got this tractor, there was no guards here. And uh, this support for the saddle and this idler roller, uh, the bolts were completely tore out of it. It was just welded to the track frame. It was quite the mess. Somebody had must have put, got her stuck and pushed on that uh, support assembly with a dozer and tore it off. But uh, I've gone through a couple undercarriages on it. I'm due for another one now. Uh, I keep thinking about updating. Not sure if I want to do that. My cat dealer has a D9R. They're offering me for $97,000. It has 68,000 hours on it. Yep, you heard me right. 68,000 hours on it. Uh, came from Kiwit over in Soda Springs at one of the phosphate mines. But anyway, uh, since I put that switchblade turbo on it, that's really made a huge difference in how this old girl gets up and moves. 
uh, modern turbo technology is just absolutely incredible. And that thing really makes this thing get the boost and, and get up and go. This thing is uh, still king of the hill. Uh, these are dang good dozers and they'll move a lot of dirt. They'll do what everything the new ones will do and just keep on running. You can't kill these things. You just can't. As long as you can get parts for them and they keep going. I need a new ram for the tilt. I need to update the heads on the dozer rams to the non-packing style. A lot of people want me to fix the hole in my dozer. That's been there since the day I bought it. That's about four times the size it was when I got it. If I don't update to a high drive, I'd really like to find an H model with a cab. Something that's in pretty good shape, straight tinware and stuff. Something I could fix up and keep running. I, I like these old tractors. Okay, this one did not come with those spin-on filters. Uh, I bought that housing and changed it over to spin-on along with the engine oil filter. One over there. Uh, one way you can tell the difference between a G and an H is the air cleaner on this side and the hydraulic tank. And so... This is a G series, even though it says H. So I've been thinking about doing some videos about some of the jobs I've done and the places I've traveled to in my lifetime and make some, uh, probably some interesting stories. But uh, just as a follow up, I wanted to mention that when I did that dam, I, that was 1994, I was 34 years old. And then that January, I loaded my stuff up and I hauled it clear down to Lake Powell, Utah, to a place called Bullfrog. My subscribers in Utah probably know that place well. <clears throat> uh, I was working for a, a pretty good-sized paving utility contractor out of Idaho Falls called Becco. And they picked up this job by accident. Uh, they beat out Brown Brothers Construction who was a contractor over in Loa, Utah, not too far away. And Brown Brothers are where I picked up my 14G. Anyway, so I'll have to do a video of some of the places I've been and some of the fun adventures I've seen. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got suggestions for things you'd like to see or like to know about me or my equipment, put them in the comments below. I'll see what I can do. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the whiteboard. Uh, just want to mention you can get your old Kenny coloring books at Amazon.com, link below. Uh, yesterday I sent out a giant garbage bag of hats to Denmark, Australia, UK, uh, all over the United States. So those of you who ordered hats, you should be getting those shortly. Uh, want to let you know if you're from Australia, the UK, wherever, and you buy a hat and calendars, and I throw the stickers in for free, don't forget that, uh, it will charge you $30 shipping. It costs me $34 to ship it to you, so you're getting a hell of a deal. So uh, we're still trying to figure out how to make it cheaper if you want the individual stuff it's about 12 bucks for the calendars to ship them but those stupid little boxes they nail me like 22 dollars so uh anyway just fyi for your information so if you want a calendar uh might as well buy the hat with it if you live overseas because it's a good deal so i want to talk about some of my awesome subscribers and i got a lot of them uh, a lot of them from the u.s today uh, Donald Cossett from Fossil, Oregon. Thank you, Donald. Dave Asquith from Port Ritchie, Florida. Kenny Mysick from Manchester, Iowa. Thank you, Kenny. Tim Daniels from Auburn, California. Thank you, Tim. Joseph Lovell from Spring Valley, Wisconsin. And J.C. Stett from Arkville, New York. There you go, J.C. Uh, Tom Ellis from Wrexham in the UK. That's in Wales. Uh, thank you for subscribing, Tom, and we'll see you next week. Hope you enjoyed the D9 history video, and I appreciate your support.